So now this is our uh, second lecture of the series, making the diagnosis. In the first uh, video, we, s we had seen that what is the importance of the presenting complaints. And now we will see uh, how to proceed further. This, uh, in this video, uh, we are not going to discuss the conventional way in which the symptom analysis of the presenting complaints is done, but we see uh, it in a different way. You see, whenever the patient they present, they present in uh, one of these uh, different type of clinical situations. For example, patient may present with a follow-up of uh, an existing or chronic ongoing disease. The second group of the patient is that they present with one of the complications of the chronic ongoing disease. So the patient may present with follow-up of a chronic disease going on. And the second group is they present with uh, the complication of a disease which is ongoing. And third, the patient they present with a new illness which has developed on top of an existing uh, illness. And the fourth category is that the patients they present with a new onset illness. They are healthy, they do not have any problem and they present with uh, a new onset illness. Now we see this is a little different from the conventional teaching in which we analyze the presenting complaints and dissect them that we go for the history of presenting complaints or the presenting illness. But I think uh, since most of the patients in hospital practice they present with chronic ongoing illnesses especially those who are admitted in the indoors or the inpatients they have ongoing chronic illnesses and they have a uh, problem related to one of these uh, chronic illnesses uh, we're going to discuss it slightly differently now you see when patients those who present with an ongoing chronic illness you see the patient may be presenting with illnesses like diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, um, malignancies, they may have the ongoing illnesses and they just present with follow-up. When these patients, they come to you, what you see is, look for the progression of the disease. Has the patient's disease progressed? For example, uh, the ischemic heart disease, is it uh, at the same level or this has progressed? For example, if the patient was having angina initially and he would have pain walking 500 meters now if the patient develops pain walking on only 200 meters that means the patient's disease is progressing so you assess the progress of the patient's ongoing chronic illness and then look for the presence of any subclinical complications they may be present for example the diabetics may have diabetic retinopathy going on and the patient doesn't know about it so when the patient comes to you, you assess for the presence of complications which have as yet not uh, manifested clinically. So go for the anticipated complications which are subclinical in this group of patients and look for the presence of these symptoms. And then you see, assess the compliance of the treatment. Is the patient compliant with the treatment? That is very important because that helps controlling many diseases and preventing the patient being symptomatic. And then look for the presence of any side effects of any treatment going on. For example, if the patient is on anti-tuberculous treatment, one of the drug is myambitol, which may cause uh, blindness. And the first manifestation is color blindness. So check for the presence of color blindness if it is there or not. So monitor the patient's treatment and its compliance, the side effects of the treatment. And then the second group of patient is that present with uh, the complications of an ongoing chronic illness. For example, the diabetic patient may come with hypoglycemia or may come with diabetic ketoacidosis. So a patient may present with complication of the ongoing disease. Similarly, the patient may have a long-term complication. For example, patient may present with swelling of the feet in a diabetic patient. This may be because of diabetic nephropathy. This may also be because of the patients taking some drug because most of these patients have concomitant hypertension and if they are taking uh, a calcium channel blocker, for example, and blodipine, that may cause swelling. So it is the complication of the disease, it's the complication of the treatment, or a patient may have associated ischemic heart disease and heart failure that may present with swelling of the feet. So 
you assess for the presence of complication when a patient presents with the symptoms. Patient comes and says that I have swelling of the feet or my face swells up. So it may be because of complication of the diabetes, it may be complication of the uh, treatment patient is taking or it may be sometimes an associated illness which may be causing it. And you see when you uh, have a cross-sectional examination of the disease at this point, some of the features may be helpful in deciding whether this is uh, uh, the complication because of the disease or it's because of some factor else. For example, if the patient has diabetic uh, retinopathy or diabetic neuropathy, that may tell you that the patient might have underlying diabetic nephropathy as cause of this uh, swelling. Or if the patient on history tells you that patient is taking a drug which can cause swelling or there may be clinical features of heart failure. So cross-sectional examination of the patient at this time may be helpful in deciding what's the possible origin of the symptoms. And then patient may present with a new illness on top of a chronic illness going on. For example, patient has diabetes, assess the stage of diabetes or if the patient has, uh, for example, taking uh, immunosuppressive treatment for a transplanted kidney. So assess what is the stage of the disease and then you see the impact of this illness on the chronic illness for example a chest infection may cause deterioration in patient's diabetic control so you see what is the impact of the acute disease on the ongoing chronic disease similarly you must see the impact of the chronic disease on the new onset illness for example if the patient has uncontrolled diabetes or if patient has immunosuppression any infection maybe it is chest, chest infection or urinary tract infection or a GI infection or skin infection that will progress rapidly that is going to worsen. So when there is a new illness you assess the impact of this new illness on the disease and the impact of the chronic illness on this new disease. So you have to see both of these uh, phenomena in patients who present with a chronic illness and there is on top a new illness. And then Many patients, particularly in the general practice, they present with a new onset illness. They are normal and they develop a new onset illness. In hospital outdoor patients, also many patients have a new onset illness. Now, when a patient comes with a new onset illness, try to assess the onset and severity of the illness to see if the patient requires an outpatient treatment, patient should be referred to emergency or patient should be admitted. So when a patient comes with a new onset illness, the objective is to decide this patient, how is this going to be treated? Is it going to be treated at home or is going to be admitted or this patient is going to be referred to emergency? So these are four different type of patients which come to you. And now when they present with symptoms, as I mentioned that the symptoms uh, which are the presenting complaints, they need to be analyzed thoroughly. So analyze these presenting symptoms. Analyze every symptom in its individual details. Then take every symptom to its logical conclusions and what is the possible reason for this uh, symptoms. And then sum up or funnel all this information to construct a differential diagnosis, a provisional diagnosis, uh, using information available from uh, all these uh, symptom analysis. And then when you analyze every symptoms, you analyze it in detail. For example, when you're analyzing, look for the location and radiation, for example, in case of pain, that pain is localized to, to what place and does the patient remain, the pain remains localized to that place or it radiates somewhere else. It is important because uh, pains, the location and radiation gives a very useful information. For example, a pain starting right in the center of the chest radiating to the jaw or to the left shoulder or left arm, maybe from the ischemic heart disease. But if a pain which is arising from the musculoskeletal region in this area may not be radiating to any place, so it's a localized pain, it may not be coming from the heart. So location and radiation is very important in giving information about the pain then look the symptom is its onset is it a sudden onset or it's a gradual onset for example a very sudden onset headache 
may indicate a subarachnoid hemorrhage while a chronic headache going on for a long time and uh, fluctuating in its intensity maybe because of the tension headaches or migraines so it's it's important the onset is very important similarly duration of the symptoms if the symptom is a very chronic one a very long standing that means generally it's not because of something very very serious or very very drastic going on and symptoms which are which are of shorter duration they should uh, be carefully analyzed so generally the symptoms which are of recent onset they are more of a problem and they require more attention but symptoms which are going on for months and years may not be that serious except in few circumstances for example if the patient is having chronic diarrhea going on that may be a, a serious or important disease underlying that uh, chronic diarrhea then you assess the severity of the symptoms for this we can simply see this is a mild disease a moderate disease or a severe disease or a symptom is severe we can use certain uh, scales as well for example for pain we can use scale from scale 0 to scale 10 or similarly for heart failure you can use the nyha classification so you can use multiple scales according to the symptoms to assess the severity of the symptom this also helps us in uh, assessing the subsequent uh, progress of the disease with the treatment of the patient whether the patient is improving or the patient is deteriorating and then look for any variation for example are there diurnal variations for example patients with asthma may show diurnal variation similarly the asthmatics may show seasonal variations and patients who've got occupational disease the symptoms they worsen at the place of duty and they improve as the patient remains away from the duty so that may be important so look for the geographic association of the disease and then assess the character particularly the character of the pain and character of the cough the character of the pain is uh, very important the pain which is because of the for example visceral origin it is dull it is ill localized and may be associated with certain autonomic features while pains which are coming from somatic structures they are usually sharp and well localized so uh, the character may be helpful in uh, ass assessing the origin of the pain. Similarly, the character of the cough is very important. Cough arising from different portions in the respiratory tree has different type of character. And then look for the presence of aggravating and relieving factors. That what worsens the symptom? For example, if the patient has a headache because of high intracranial pressure, cough may increase the pressure. Similarly, the patients who've got uh, ischemic heart disease, the pain is brought by exertion and it improves with rest or sublingual uh, nitrate tablets. Similarly, the patients with pain of pancreatitis, they tend to sit upward and lean forward and this may help somewhat in uh, their pain, although it doesn't go away, but it improves slightly. Then look for the presence of associated phenomena. For example, if the patient has along with the symptoms like uh, uh, cough, the patient has sputum or patient has uh, hemoptysis. Similarly, are there any autonomic features present? For example, patient has nausea, vomiting, patient doesn't feel well, patient is anxious. So note the presence of associated uh, symptoms with the main symptoms. So that is important because you see a patient who's having pain coming from the visceral region may have an autonomic discharge for example patient with pain of ischemic heart disease may present with nausea and vomiting so look for the presence of associated phenomena as well and then look for the progression of the symptoms that what has been the progress over time they have been improving or they have been deteriorating so you analyze all the presenting complaints like this and then take every symptom to its logical conclusion for example we take an example of uh, shortness of breath shortness of breath may be caused by respiratory illnesses it may be caused by cardiac illnesses it may be caused by hematological illnesses it may be caused by uh, anemia and hematological illnesses it may be seen in a renal failure this may also be seen in some of these psychiatric patients so analyze thoroughly what is the possible origin of the symptoms and this is usually usually helped by looking for the other symptoms of that organ system for example 
if the patient has respiratory disease causing shortness of breath, patient may have cough, patient may have chest pain, which is pleuritic in nature, patient may have wheezing. So this may help to find out which organ system is involved. So look uh, for all symptoms and take these symptoms to their logical conclusions and analyze all those symptoms to make an anatomical diagnosis. And then uh, funnels the conclusion of all symptoms and try to make a provisional diagnosis and a differential diagnosis. So this is how we proceed and if at this stage we are not able to make a diagnosis in the history then we look for the other components of the uh, history which we will discuss in our next lecture and then after that we will start the physical examination of the patient that how we proceed in physical examination.